Using your ICOM radio remotely has never been easier when using the RSBA1 remote control software from ICOM. Now this is version 2, which provides a few upgrades from previous versions. Now later in the video, we'll cover software installation and setup, but let's take a brief look over the user interface to see what features are available while using this software. Now version 2 sees the addition of a mute button located around the main volume controls. Now if using a radio with a sub receiver, then two mute buttons would be available. RIT tuning knob and TX functions have also been added in version 2. And if your radio has a sub receiver, a new sub control would also be located in this area. Controlling transmit, ATU tuning, preamp and microphone settings like compression can all be set using the set of buttons running down the left side of the application, making it quick and easy to adjust radio settings. Dual watch and dual spectrum scopes have also been added and these work with supported radios. Main radio controls and display are shown right in the center of the application. And if you're familiar with ICOM's easy to read screens, then you'll feel right at home with this display. A band selection is also available at a click of a mouse button, choosing one of the predefined ham radio bands. Now to the right of this, we find the filter section, which provides nice and easy to use filters, especially the notch filters with automatic mode, which in my opinion, is worth its weight in gold, especially if you don't like the sound of constant tuners on the frequency. The typical modulation is changed when selecting bands, but you can manually change modulation using the buttons along the bottom of the display. Those that are greyed out will not be supported on your radio. For example, here we can see DV is greyed out while using my 7300, but if I was using a 9700, then I could select DV from this menu. RF power, audio volume, along with squelch and RF gain can be controlled using these rotary dials. Simply hover your mouse over a control and either click the left or right mouse button to increase or decrease the value for that control. Now it works exactly the same way for the main VFO located here. However, there is another option to control in the VFO rather than using your mouse and that's using the RC28 an external VFO connected to your computer via USB cable. Now the RSBA1 software will arrive in a box like this. And within this box, you will have various pieces of documentation along with a USB cable. Now this USB cable is to connect between your ICOM radio and your computer or server, depending on your configuration. It's worth reading through some of this documentation just to get yourself familiar with how this software works. Now instead of receiving the software on CD, ICOM now provide the software on a USB stick, which contains the required drivers, main RSBA1 application, and a couple of PDF manuals, which I would recommend to have a read through. With every kit, you will receive a product ID and license key. Now, please don't share this with anyone else as this is your own personal license for your application installation, and it's required as part of the installation process. The RC28 comes carefully packaged with a filtered USB cable. Now the build quality is what you'd expect from ICOM. And let me tell you something, this thing has some decent weight to it. It feels extremely solid. Now three buttons along with the encoder allow you to use the RSBA1 software very easily. Two function buttons and a main PTT button are located on the top panel. Now the PTT transmit button also has a nice soft touch, while the two function buttons have a noticeable click when pressing them down. On the underside, we find a nice rubberized base. Now this helps to keep the RC28 in place while using it on your desk or other flat surface. So let's go through the software setup. And first, I'll just need to pop the USB memory stick into my computer. Now the contents of the USB drive should look like this, with two folders and a few PDF files. Now the PDFs are the manuals, which I would recommend you take a read through. Now one folder contains the drivers for your radio and the other folder is the main application. 
Before installing the main application, ensure that you've installed the drivers on your computer. This installation will be on the computer that's physically connected to my ICOM 7300 that's going to be connected via the supplied USB cable. But if you're using an ICOM radio which connects directly to the network, then the setup will only need to be performed on the computer which is remote controlling the radio. Now run the setup for RSBA1 and follow the on-screen prompts. Enter in your name and then onto the product ID and license key that you received inside the box. Once installation is finished, you will now have two new icons on the desktop. Now there are three different ways in which you can use this software, either on the same computer which is connected to the radio, on a computer which is on the same network as the server which is connected to the radio, or use it remotely via the internet. Now I'll be configuring my installation so that I can either use it across my home network or via the internet from another location. Now before configuring the software, it is worth making sure the radio is configured correctly and it depends on which model you have will depend on which settings need to be made. You can refer to the manual for more information on this. Now on my 7300 we go into the menu and then into the connector section. We need to check the CIV address and then make a note of it. We also need to make sure that the CIV USB port setting is set to unlink from remote and then underneath this setting ensure the board rate is set to 115200. Now without this board rate set, the waterfall and scope will not work on the remote software. So once the radio is configured, we can now run the ICOM utility software. Here we need to fill out some information. First, you'll need to set the name of the PC. Now I just called mine home in this example. Also choose the type of internet connection that you're using. It may be worth making a note of the port numbers shown here if you plan on using this software outside of your home network, i.e. a holiday home or even a friend's house, for example. Once you click the register button, you'll need to close the application and then reopen it, where you will then be presented with this screen. The wizard setup allows you to choose the most relevant installation for your required setup. So first I'll set up the local server and then add a radio. This is the radio connected directly to this computer via the USB cable. The CIV address and board rate set here should match the settings that we saw in the radio earlier. You can also give this radio a unique name so that it's easily identified from the remote software. Now if you click the connect button while the radio is highlighted, the remote utility software will connect to the radio. To prepare for remote connections, set up a user on the user management tab. You can also choose which radios the user is able to control, assuming you had more than one radio. So now it's time to open the remote control program and set up the connector. If you're using this software locally, then you can just simply choose USB as the connection type. The software will then work locally over the USB cable with your radio. However, when using remotely on another computer, either on your local area network or even outside of your local area network, then you need to set up a server connection. If you're configuring for outside of your home network, then you'll need to port forward three UDP ports on your router's firewall to the computer which is running the remote utility. Now all routers are different, so please consult your manual on how to do this. With remote utility running on the computer connected to the radio, let's head over to the laptop which is connected to the internet via a mobile network device. Within remote utility on the laptop, we need to add a server. The details will be that of the remote utility computer which is connected to the radio. If you're running over the network, then it will be a local IP address. If running over the internet, then you'll put the server's external IP address in here. Now here you need to enter the user ID and password credentials that you filled out earlier on the server. You can also give this server connection a unique name in case you have more than one server on your system. Now once connected to the server, the available radios will be listed. Now make a note of the virtual COM port shown. If it's not listed, then just select the radio and click settings and then assign a virtual COM port. Once connected, you can now run the remote control software and head to connect to set. 
Fill out the required details as shown here with your details and then press the OK button. You should now be able to press the top left connect button and open the waterfall. Having full control of your radio remotely, you can use the laptop speakers and microphone to make a QSO. If you have the RC28, you can also use this to tune the radio to a different frequency. When it comes to choosing a microphone to use remotely, then using a headset with mic or a dedicated desktop will most likely provide better transmission quality. However, you can still use the mic that's built into your laptop if required. The RSBA1 version 2 together with the RC28 can be purchased from most iCom suppliers. So now you have no excuse not to use your radio while away from home and it definitely beats lugging your radio equipment and antennas around with you.